now that GTA Online is officially out again, this time around exclusively for PlayStation 5 as well as Xbox Series S and X, I am giving you my review of what I'm calling the GTA Online Milked Edition. We're going to go over the pros, the cons, and my verdict. By the way, I want to know what you think of GTA Online on PS5, Xbox Series X, and S so far, especially for those of you that have uh, acquired it, purchased it, whether it's uh, GTA Online or you know, GTA 5 with GTA Online. Feel free and give us your opinion regarding the latest version of Grand Theft Auto Online below in the comments section. Let's start things off with the pros. Thanks to the new performance and performance RT modes, GTA Online on the PS5 as well as Xbox Series X does feel and run a lot smoother than on the PS4, Xbox One versions. Up to 60 FPS, 4K resolution, HDR options, improved textures, faster loading time surprisingly. I've been able to go from a uh, public lobby to a friend or invite lobby in an impressive amount of time in GT Online. And of course, a lot of it depends on your internet connection as well. You have to have pretty decent quality internet in order to take full advantage of Grand Theft Auto Online on PS5, Xbox Series S, and X. There's also haptic feedback as well as adapted triggers, DualSense on the PS5, 3D audio, so all that's definitely pros. The new menu design for GTA Online is actually impressive. I was pleasantly surprised. It's similar to Red Dead Online, but surprisingly better. It has uh, subcategories for heists, where you can look over all the different heists, the series mode, as well as what's new, uh, join free roam, and more. Plus, you're now able to find a new session in GT Online, not just public sessions, but invite and friend sessions instead of through GTA 5, which is really good, especially for players that only went with GTA Online stand alone. The next pro is Hal's Special Workshop, which is exclusive to the PS5 Xbox Series version of GTA Online, and Hal allows you to upgrade 10 vehicles with HSW performance upgrades, five new exclusive vehicles just for PS5 Xbox Series, and five pre-existing vehicles. There's also new HSW time trials along with HSW races. However, the HSW races are basically OG land races. They just slightly renamed them and made it to where you could use the HSW vehicles in OG land races. Not all OG land races, but a few of them. And for all vehicles on GTA Online PS5 Xbox Series, you can now get Chameleon paint jobs this can be done at uh, Los Santos Customs, not just how Special Works, but probably all the different garage shops throughout the game. The next major pro, in my opinion, is the Career Builder. This is fantastic for new players because I realize this game is over eight years old. I've been playing it since launch back in 2013 on the Xbox 360. There's a lot of us that are veteran players, but there's always new players jumping in here and there, especially for the PS5 Xbox Series versions. And on PS5, we're going to go over the prices in a moment. Most of you know from now through June, GTA Online is free, which means there's going to be a lot more people interested in trying out GTA Online on the PS5. And what's awesome about the Career Builder is it's simply not just throwing you out into the world of GTA Online with a pistol and only a couple thousand bucks and some clothes on your back. The Career Builder and the tutorial that follows the Career Builder is definitely going to help new players. So whether you're a new player or you're a veteran player that just wants to start over with one of your accounts, you're going to have four options to go in with either the executive, gunrunner, nightclub, or biker. My personal choice is the gunrunner. Some people say executive, but I feel like gunrunner is the best of the four, but that's just how I feel. The game's going to allocate you $4 million to use in the career builder. You can take up to $1 million with you into GT Online, but you have to spend about $3 million on the career builder itself, whether it uh, comes to uh, acquiring a property for the executive gun hunter, nightclub biker, as well as uh, upgrades for the property, a vehicle, a weapon. You're going to have to at least get one vehicle, one weapon. So if you want to be cheap, go with one of the cheaper vehicles. But when it comes to weapons, I would probably recommend, if you're just going to grab one weapon off the bat, go with the special carbine rifle. After you get the career builder set up, you go into the uh, character creator in order to create your character, male, female, 
and the various other options. And then once you have your character created and named, then you find yourself outside uh, Los Santos Police Station and you get to do a uh, tutorial. You're in an introduction session, which is helpful for new players, give you the basics of what to expect and what to do in GT Online. You know, just the 411, I guess more like a 101 for uh, beginners in GT Online. I thought the tutorial was pretty helpful, but... It didn't give you every bit of information. The rest of it, you'll just have to learn along the way. But the good news is about the career builder is if you do go down the nightclub or biker path, and this is for anyone that has nightclubs and biker businesses, the base payouts have been increased for biker sale missions as well as nightclub daily income. But once again, if you want to know which of the four uh, roles to start with, I would go with Gunrunner. I think most people feel the same way. In case you're curious about which role you want to start with when it comes to the career builder. And eventually, once you make uh, plenty of money, you can also dabble in the executive nightclub as well as biker and biker businesses down the road. The next pro is surprisingly the prices. They're lower than a lot of us were expecting. As we already mentioned, the GTA Online standalone version on PS5 from now through June 14th is free. So even if you're only casually interested in GTA Online and you happen to have a PS5, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and claim it and put it in your library in case you decide to play GTA Online on PS5 somewhere down the road. For everything else, 50% discounts. For example, the standalone version of GTA Online is uh, discounted on Xbox Series S and X for $10 US. And then GTA 5 is priced a little differently. It's $20 US on the Xbox Series S and X and $10 on the PS5. However, if you want the Rockstar Editor to go with GTA Online, I would advise you to just go ahead and purchase GTA 5 because the Rockstar Editor is locked behind GTA 5. Oh, don't worry. I'll talk about that in the cons. One of the most recent pros to the Milk Edition of GTA Online is an issue that was resolved a couple days ago for PS4, Xbox One players who at one time transferred a version of their character over to PC back in 2015. They can now migrate their PS4, Xbox One character to PS5 and Xbox Series. The first day on Tuesday at launch, they weren't able to do so. A lot of people were upset about that, rightfully so. And Rockstar, fortunately, within a few hours, fixed that issue. So now that players that at one time, whether they still play on PC or no longer touch the PC version of GT Online back in 2015, they shouldn't be punished for that choice. And now they're able to use their PS4, Xbox One characters to migrate over to either the PS5 or the Xbox Series. And the final pro I want to bring up is the fact that Rockstar has mentioned that they have future rebalancing plans for GTA Online for the PS5 Xbox Series, including vehicles commonly used in PvP combat, like the broomstick, perhaps even uh, the laser, the Hydra, a few other PvP-themed vehicles. I would like for Rockstar to rebalance all the uh, PvP-type vehicles, buff some, nerf some of the other ones, maybe like uh, buff the armor on the Valkyrie, for example, in order to balance those vehicles. That way, there's more variety in uh, GTA Online, especially when it comes to public lobbies. And not everybody's using a broomstick or a laser or a Hydra. Hopefully, the rebalancing of the vehicles commonly used for PvP combat will make the game overall more balanced and enjoyable for players. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Now, let's migrate over to cons. Speaking of migration, Transferring your PS4 Xbox One character to PS5 or Xbox Series will delete your PS4 Xbox One character, which means you can't play with friends on last gen, and you either have to hold off on transferring your primary PS4 Xbox One character or create a secondary account for PS5 Xbox Series and eventually transfer your last gen character over before some sort of uh, migration deadline, or you simply just have to create a brand new PS4 or Xbox One character to play with your friends. So you have to start over either way, or you simply have to abandon what friends you do have on the PS4 or Xbox One. And most players aren't willing to do that because they have friends that are still on the Xbox One or PS4, and not everybody's been able to get a PS5 or Xbox Series because of shortages and the economy and the fact that not everybody can afford a PS5 or Xbox Series X or S, even if they were on the shelves. The first time Rockstar did this migration was from the 360 PS3 to the PS4 Xbox One. But back then, we actually 
actually were allowed to keep a 360 and PS3 version of those characters while at the same time being able to play on the Xbox One and PS4. So if we still had friends on the 360 or PS3, we could always jump back to our PS3, Xbox 360 character and play with our friends on last gen back then and then jump back over to PS4. They were two separate characters, but they're basically clones. For example, my Xbox One character is a clone of my Xbox 360 character. But for some reason, Rockstar had this brilliant idea to make players delete our PS4, Xbox One characters once they were transferred over to PS5, Xbox Series. Hopefully Rockstar will see the backlash they're getting and will reverse course on that decision. And if not, I guess just wait until the opportunity arises, whether uh, an impending uh, migration deadline in the future or the next uh, update for GT Online, specifically if there's unique content for PS5, Xbox Series, before you make that migration. Because once you move over to Xbox Series and PS5, it's not cross-gen. PS5, PS4 players cannot play together. So there's no cross-gen. I didn't really expect there to be cross-gen because there wasn't from PS3, Xbox 360 to Xbox One, PS4. But there's also another con revolved around the lack of crossplay. For some reason, Rockstar is completely against the idea of crossplay, even though a lot of other online games are doing it. So we have no crossplay between PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series players in GTA Online. And that's just one of many prime examples how Rockstar is behind the times. If other studios can have online games that allow players to play on PlayStation as well as Xbox, then Rockstar, you can do it too, especially for the current milked edition version of GTA Online for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series S and X. The next con is a little blurry. I'm talking about, of course, the motion blur. This is making some people feel dizzy and sick, and there definitely needs to be an option for players to turn off motion blur. We're still on the peer-to-peer -peer system. Yes, yeah, that's definitely a big con in my opinion because once again, there's other studios, big and small, that have online live service games that have dedicated servers for their communities. Unfortunately, Rockstar and Take-Two, despite making billions upon billions of dollars off of GTA 5 and GTA Online through shark cards over the years, still choose to keep GTA Online on PS5, Xbox Series on peer-to-peer -peer instead of investing into dedicated servers which would make the game run even better and would be a lot safer for not only the players in the GTA Online community, but it would be easier for Rockstar to manage on their end. But no, Rockstar continues to be cheap and rely on peer-to-peer -peer instead of dedicated servers. Another con is no updated traffic. Now, there is a difference between GTA 5 and GTA Online. Most of GTA 5 still takes place in the year 2013. So you really don't expect the traffic to be updated in GTA 5. But in GTA Online, it's set in quote unquote modern times. One would think that Rockstar would want to refresh the traffic in GTA Online, especially for this brand new PS5 Xbox Series version. So there's tons of vehicles from 2013 all the way up to 2019 at the very least that they could pick and choose from out of previous updates to put into the traffic, replace older vehicles with newer vehicles, older SUVs, coupes, sedans, muscle cars, etc., with something a little bit newer. That way, when we're driving around Los Santos, Blaine County, all the way up to Polito Bay, you wouldn't see the same vehicles from 2013 driving around in GT Online. Yes, I know you'd probably still have a few 2013 era vehicles because that's the way it is in real life, but you would expect there to be some newer vehicles also driving around by NPCs throughout the map of GTA Online for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series. Another thing I would have really liked to finally see included in GTA Online for PS5, Xbox Series is wildlife and sea life. And there has always been wild and sea life in GTA 5, but they never added it to GTA Online. It's understandable why they couldn't add it to the 360 and PS3 versions, but a lot of us thought that they might have been able to do it for PS4, Xbox One, our PC, but they never did it for PC, and that never made any sense. But you think that over eight years later, the PS5 and the Xbox Series would be strong enough and powerful enough to also handle having wildlife and sea life in GTA Online. Unfortunately, we have no sea or wildlife in the current version of GTA Online either. 
And another thing they didn't even bother updating is the iFruit foam. It's the same damn iFruit foam that we've been using since 2013. And there's actually three different phones that Michael Trevor Franklin use in GTA 5. At the very least, Rockstar could you know, put a variety of different phones for players to choose from. But no, we're using the same damn iFruit phone from 2013, even though it's now 2022. I touched on this next con a moment ago, but yeah, the Rockstar editor being locked behind GTA 5 is definitely a con because there's a lot of us that enjoy using the Rockstar editor in GTA Online, whether it's uh, making little videos or uh, making some awesome screenshots and thumbnails with it. But if you don't really care for the Rockstar editor, if you don't use the Rockstar editor, then this will not affect you, so you don't have to worry about also acquiring GTA 5. But for those of us that love playing GTA Online and using the Rockstar Editor, unfortunately, it's locked behind the GTA 5 paywall. And I would recommend, if you really do like the Rockstar Editor and you want to continue using it on PS5 and Xbox Series, go ahead and purchase the uh, GTA 5 version right now because at least it's discounted at 50%. So at least you get that 50% discount in order to be able to use the Rockstar Editor in GTA Online, but it still sucks that it's locked behind GTA 5. The next con is another prime example why Rockstar and Take-Two should have invested in dedicated servers for the PS5, Xbox Series versions of GTA Online because glitches, issues, bugs have carried over from PS4, Xbox One to PS5, Xbox Series, including God Mode and some other problems as well. Hopefully Rockstar will work hard to resolve those issues, but it would be a lot easier to manage if, once again, Rockstar actually had dedicated servers instead of peer-to-peer. -peer. The next con will annoy a lot of people that like getting custom plates on their vehicles, we're still unable to get custom plates at Los Santos Customs. And last I checked, the iFruit app for smartphones is broken. I don't know if Rockstar is updated it anytime soon. But for the current version, the brand new version of GTA Online for PS5 Xbox Series, you think that one of the additional features that they would have included was the ability for players to go to Los Santos Customs and make customizable plates. Even if we still had to drop, what, $100,000 for the plates? but we could use the plate on all of our vehicles, it would be much more convenient to be able to customize our plates than through the broke-ass iFruit app on our smartphones in real life. Or at the very least, what if Rockstar created an app within the iFruit phone, that way we could pull it up anytime we wanted to within the game and get customized plates that way? To be honest, the ability to have custom plates is something that should have been in the game since uh, launch back in 2013. We should have never had to rely on an app on smartphones in order to have custom plates. But unfortunately, this is just another missed opportunity by Rockstar to make the current version of GTA Online even better. Exclusive content is another con because I feel like most of this content that is exclusive to the PS5, Xbox Series versions of GTA Online could have also probably been included with uh, PS4, Xbox One, and PC without melting those consoles. And that's one reason why I refer to Hal's special workshop and the vehicles as nothing more than Los Santos Tuners 1.5. It is possible that the HSW upgrades and maybe even the chameleon paint jobs might not be doable on the PS4, Xbox One, but I, I doubt it. I feel like that you could still have those upgrades on PS4 and Xbox One consoles and PC as well. I just feel like Rockstar intentionally made some of the content planned for Los Santos Tuners exclusive for PS5 and Xbox Series for the simple reason of having something unique and exclusive for players for PS5 and Xbox Series. The next con is revolved around the MC sales and nightclub daily income boosts only being for PS5 and Xbox Series. Obviously, Rockstar could do these boosts for the PS4 and Xbox One and PC as well, but it's just like with the exclusive uh, Los Santos Tuners 1.5 How content. They're doing this specifically to entice more and more people to move over to the PS5 and Xbox Series, even if there are those out there that can't get their hands on a PS5 or Xbox Series because of scalpers, shortages, or the economy. Speaking of last gen, this is a con, in my opinion. Players that already had copies of GTA 5 on PS4, Xbox One should have gotten a quote-unquote free upgrade for the PS5 Xbox series. No, not just the standalone version of GTA Online. I'm talking the whole thing, GTA 5 and online for PS5 and Xbox series, because we've been loyal customers to this franchise and to Rockstar for a very long time. 
Myself, I've bought a few copies of GTA 5 through the years, including copies for PS4 and Xbox One, and I think with how much money Rockstar and Take Two has made off of the GTA community through copies of GTA 5 sold, as well as Shark Arts and GTA Online, it would have been a nice PR move for Take Two and Rockstar to allow players that already had copies for PS4, Xbox One to get a quote unquote free upgrade to the PS5, Xbox Series versions, because fun fact, those versions are already backwards compatible on your PS5 and Xbox Series consoles. Another con I wanna throw out there is for my PC players because I feel like they're getting neglected right now. Obviously, most gaming PCs that run GT Online should be able to handle Hal's Workshop, the new cars, the chameleon paint job, and they already have uh, the much smoother frame rates and performances that we were desiring for the PS5 and Xbox series. So my question to Rockstar is, are you planning on adding the Milked Edition content for PS5 players as well? Maybe they'll actually get a free upgrade. Or are you gonna make them have to buy GTA Online and GTA 5 once again for PC through the Rockstar Games launcher, eventually Steam, despite already having a copy of GTA 5 on PC already? That's kind of a con, kind of a question at the same time. But the final con I wanna go over is the fact that GTA Online is long in the tooth. It has been around since 2013 from the PlayStation 3, 360 to PS4, Xbox One, PC, now PS5, Xbox Series. Meanwhile, Rockstar and Take-Two's obsession with GTA Online has neglected uh, the next GTA game. It should have been out much sooner. And it also has led to Red Dead Online being neglected and the disastrous launch of the GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition. Bear in mind, originally GTA 5 and Online for PS5 Xbox Series was confirmed to come out on November 11th, 2021. It got delayed till March 15th, 2022. And in its place, Rockstar and Take Two for the holiday season rushed GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition out the door a little too soon. So because of GTA Online and the Milk Edition of GTA 5 Online, it has resulted in the neglection of Red Dead Online, further delay of the next GTA game, as well as the disastrous launch of the GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition because Rockstar and Take-Two was focusing on the billions and billions and billions of dollars that GTA 5 and Online continues to make them. And this is coming from a guy that's been playing GT Online since 2013 and covering it on my channel since I launched it nearly eight years ago. So there's the pros, the cons, time now for my verdict. The Milked Edition is not exactly a W or an L, it's not a win or a loss, it's more in the middle, it's more of a meh. Somewhere in between good and bad, the performance RT modes definitely make GT Online on PS5 Xbox Series run and feel a bit smoother but Rockstar could have done more with the Milked Edition in order to justify having players pay for GTA 5 and online once again. Even if you never bought shark cards, there's plenty of us that have bought copy after copy after copy of GTA 5 from the 316 PS3 era to Xbox One PS4, PC, and now PS5 Xbox Series. But there's definitely things that I liked about the Milked Edition of GT Online. There's already been over 40 updates to Rockstar's credit when it comes to GT Online since 2013, from the beach bum all the way to the uh, contract. So I hope that the updates they have planned down the road for the PS5 Xbox Series versions, while at the same time continuing to add some content to PS4 and Xbox One as well as PC, is worth continuing to play GTA Online, especially with how powerful and awesome the PS5 and Xbox Series consoles happen to be. I definitely want to see some future expansions map-wise. The ability to finally go up to North Yankton, a fully finished complete version of North Yankton, perhaps even uh, Liberty City. Who knows, perhaps some other locations like an updated version of San Fierro or Las Venturas would be awesome on the PS5 Xbox Series versions of GTA Online, but perhaps that's just a pipe dream on my part. Your thoughts, your views, your opinions regarding the Milked Edition of GTA Online for PS5 Xbox Series. What do you like about it? What do you don't like about it? What are your pros, cons, and final verdict regarding GTA Online for PlayStation 5 Xbox Series S and X? As always, welcome below in the comments section.